Hello everybody, Sanyer, Engineer, MBA and Investor. In today's video, I want to talk about why CRISPR therapeutics is still king of the CRISPR landscape when it comes to CRISPR public companies. I want to talk about all of that here in this video. So the aftermath of the innovation, they hit this company very, very bad. I mean, if you look at the, what happened since, uh, I guess, just before, around 2 p.m. yesterday when they started publishing their slides and went over their innovation day, the company stock has been down almost 19, 18%, right? So that is a huge drop in 24 hours. Obviously, this had to do with the last video we made yesterday. We sort of tackled some of it here and there. It more, more likely had to do with the, their CAR-T program. Um, and obviously, you know, them not really releasing any sort of data for their type 1 diabetes program. They, they have yet to release any data that they've they dosed the patient in February, the first week of February of this year. And we have yet to get any sort of data. Uh, they did publish some slide with what they plan to do in that sphere when it comes to type 1 diabetes but again you know i don't want to talk about the next generation if i don't even have the current generation data um but again i understand the criticism i understand where people are coming from um but this is why in my opinion crispy diabetics is still king right basically the company stock was down seven percent today for example just today and most crispr stocks didn't actually perform as well, right? So what I'm getting at here is CRISPR therapeutics here, whatever happened in that innovation day affected other company stock. You can take a look at it. Now, that's just correlation, right? It doesn't really mean much. That's just correlation. It's because it's the same type of company in the space. This happens in all industries. I mean, if you have a fintech company like Square or Block, known as Block today, if Block, you know, gets sued by, you know, the FTC or whatever, um, what's going to happen after that is all the companies in the fintech space are going to go down with it, like PayPal, right, and Affirm and so on. So that's one thing, right? The second reason why I believe CRISPR therapeutics is king is because they are the leading company when it comes to patient dose in terms of CRISPR. There is no other company that comes even close to Hexacell CTX001 progress, right? No other company's program, right? Not Caribou, not NTLA, not Beam Therapeutics, certainly not the Beam Therapeutics with a zero patients dose, uh, for sure not Editas. So really, you know, Crystal Therapeutics is leading the way with Hexacell throughout this year as they reiterated in that PowerPoint slide that we went over yesterday that they plan on submitting for FDA approval by the end of this year, 2022. That's been something they've been repeating since the end of 2021. So they're on track to do it, Vertex and CRISPR therapeutics for Hexacell. Now, obviously that's just one program. They went over the other programs, right? And I actually wanna take a look at this tweet here from CRISPR Tommy. Uh, and Yair sort of tweeted here, yesterday I have listened carefully to the entire innovation day. And although the common opinion on Twitter is that it was sheer disaster, I tend to disagree. And then he's going to talk about it this weekend. But then CRISPR, uh, CRISPR Tommy sorry, answered, I agree with you. I didn't see disaster at all. I enjoyed it. People thought it was a disaster. Have to understand they are doing what they can with the tools they have. It's not like they're beam that they can use cast will be multiple editors or prime editing. Go CRISPR Therapeutics. And I 100% agree with that. We have to remember that CRISPR Duplex has CRISPR Cas9. They're using it with their hexacell. They've been successful and they're trying to replicate that success into CAR T cells, into type 1 diabetes, into now heart disease as well, potentially, as we get data next year for these new programs that they announce. Um, and I actually agree here with uh, CRISPR Tommy here talking about how you know the expectation is that they have to do everything. Uh, right away, as if you know that standard is not put on beam therapeutics, it is not put on Editas, it is not put on Graphite Bio or on Calibu or on NTLA. Now I understand, you know, this company is the furthest in for one program, but that doesn't mean the standard should be elevated out of every other company. And if you do elevate it, then basically gives, leads me to believe that you believe that CRISPR therapeutics is the king of the space. Right? It is the wolf on top of the mountain and everyone's trying to, you know, 
get to the top. And how they're doing it is by promoting their own company, by saying, oh, it's a disaster. This company's done for the stock price. I think someone on Twitter said the stock price is going to go down to like 25 or even zero. Someone else says zero. I mean, they're just del delusional, right? That That's my word. I have to describe them. I'm sorry, but they're delusional. Um, and obviously here, Chris Bear, Tommy here is talking about uh, some good stuff here from their type 1 diabetes slide that, again, we sort of covered really quickly, but it looks like, you know, if we take a look at it here in uh, show survival, vascularization, and good B to A cells ratio in rats. Again, this was for rats for their 211 program, which is the next generation of type 1 diabetes. Um, but still very interesting. Yeah, sure. So we'll see how this goes. I mean, this is this this type 1 diabetes, again, was my biggest disappointment. Uh, but for the stock price to be down almost 20% in 24 hours is ridiculous in my opinion. Uh, I think this company is still king. I think this is the company to beat in the CRISPR landscape. They are the leading company in terms of market cap as we speak. Uh, they've done everything in my opinion uh, right when it comes to dosing patient, when it comes to entering into markets like heart diseases. People are saying, oh, they're copying Verve Therapeutics with heart diseases. I might as well remind people that there's other programs with sickle cell disease and beta cell semia, and no one's talking about how they're copying CRISPR therapeutics, right? Uh, and I, I would like to remind people that heart diseases, uh, there is no other company in phase one data right now. There's no company with even in human data in the heart disease space when it comes to this CRISPR. So, you know, who cares if CRISPR therapeutics wants to get in heart disease? I think more people should be getting in heart disease. No one's copying anybody here. You know, you got to think about the patients, right? You got to think about humans, right? Heart disease is the leading cause of death in America. I mean, would you want more companies in, in this space? The TAM is just larger. And just think about what the government is going to be pouring money into these types of companies that are tackling this, this noble disease, right? Um, I, I just think it's ridiculous. I think people are, like I said, you know, this company is king and people are finding ways to dethrone the king. But I have bad news for those people. Chris Petutix is still king. They have not been dethroned. And if you think otherwise, let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hopefully, you guys are having a beautiful Wednesday midweek here. I am. It's very hot here in Toronto. So hopefully, wherever you are, stay safe, drink water. I'll see you guys in the next video. Find, like this video if you found value. Subscribe if you're not. And I'll see you guys in the next. Thank you.